Hi everyone, I'm here today with Jules Kortenhorst. He's the CEO of the Rocky Mountain Institute and the Carbon War Room. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jules. Nice to be here. So I want to talk to you today about the signing of the Paris Climate Agreement, which is going on this week on Earth Day, uh, and there's going to be 155 different countries there signing this agreement. What is your reaction to that? The Paris Climate Summit was a great success for the world. For the first time, we've aligned worldwide on an incredibly bold ambition to keep the temperature rise well below two degrees, and maybe even more dramatically, to fully decarbonize the world economy in the second half of this century. 188 countries submitted their INDCs, the so-called Intended Nationally Determined Contributions, say pledges to the Paris Agreement. But these pledges alone are not enough to limit the temperature rise to well below two degrees. Growth paths of both developed and developing countries is still very much based on fossil fuels and pledges together don't yet add up to the ambitious goal of well below two degrees. Also, pledges are nice on paper, but they need to be translated into detailed implementation plans. And then we'll need to have a ratcheting mechanism, we'll need to increase the ambition of the agreement over the course of time. But when businesses, governments, philanthropists and civil society all work together, I expect that we can overcome some of those barriers. So what else is needed to keep us well below this two degrees Celsius mark in the coming century? What we critically need now is to help create detailed implementation plans for governments to deliver on their promises. We also need accelerated deployment of renewables, primarily wind and solar, but also hydro, geothermal, battery storage, and of course electric vehicles. Worldwide, we need a dramatic increase in energy efficiency to get more out of every kilowatt or joule of energy that we produce. And finally, we need to create a mechanism so that countries can learn from each other's successes spread the accelerating new technologies and together drive this energy transition. So let's talk a little bit about our organization. Um, how is the work of Rocky Mountain Institute and Carbon War Room helping to reach these climate goals outlined in the agreement? At Rocky Mountain Institute and Carbon War Room, we are in the business of accelerating the transition to a clean, prosperous and secure low carbon future. We work with countries and with industries to create those detailed implementation plans for the energy transition to get more out of renewables and drive more energy efficiency. And in that way, we are enabling the crucial next steps of the Paris Agreement, of the implementation of that agreement. So we will work with countries and industries to accelerate that transition. At the country level, we've a number of years ago already created this vision for the United States called Reinventing Fire, and a vision that shows how the United States economy can continue to grow fast and at the same time move away from fossil fuels. And over the last year and a half, we helped the Chinese government create a similar vision for the Chinese economy, uh, a blueprint for them to peak their greenhouse gas emissions much earlier. And now we're working with more than 30 cities in China to actually deliver on that blueprint. We support small islands in the Caribbean, uh, islands that have an abundance of wind and solar, uh, to move away from polluting diesel-powered electricity generation and, and leverage the new technologies. And in Rwanda, we are working to electrify uh, much more of the, the countryside, bring electricity to the poor, uh, but leapfrog to the next generation of technology, solar. Uh, and, and we hope to scale that across Africa and Asia. So aside from working with a long list of different cities and countries, how are we helping different industry sectors? Our business renewable center brings major corporations like Microsoft and Google, General Motors, Facebook together to streamline and accelerate how they buy uh, renewables at a large scale, often off-site uh, wind and solar. We help mines in remote locations around the planet to put in place solar parks on their sites so they can move away from diesel power generation. We do leading edge work in thinking about batteries and storage, and, and combining that with solar. 
We work with solar developers to drive down the cost of community solar, putting solar more within the price range of lower incomes. And we advise utility regulators about the regulatory frameworks that we're going to need for the energy transition. In the transport sector, uh, we do work um, with the cities of Austin and Denver to move to a whole new mobility concept around uh, ride sharing, around commuting as a service, around electric fleets, and in due course, even around autonomous vehicles. And our trucking program aims to double the freight efficiency of North American freight transport uh, on the basis of building more confidence in the technologies that all exist to uh, make trucks more efficient. And finally, in the building area, we are driving the adoption of super efficient technologies. And our new building in Basalt is a wonderful example of that. It, uh, it is a large building, 50,000 square feet, but it works on the energy of only 16 hair dryers. That's pretty impressive. So if you had one message for our audience watching today, what would you like to say to them? Well, we can't do this on our own we are going to need the help of everyone. And we need the help of all of our supporters to fund the work that we do here at RMI. So the implementation of the Paris Agreement is the crucial next step to move us to a sustainable energy future. And we need your help and financial support to bring that about. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jules. And if anyone out there would like to learn more about our organization or get involved and donate, you can visit our website at rmi.org slash donate.